Mr. Neumeister, based on the um, analysis you performed in this case, uh, have you formed any opinions? Pardon? Based on the analysis you've done in this case, have you formed any opinions? Yes. What are they? Well, three basic ones. One is quite a number of the photos have been through a photo, uh, at least one, possibly checks. Objection, Your Honor, foundation, which photos is he referring to? We have to go through this number. Okay. One's in evidence. Um, Mr. Neumeister, in terms of the photos um, that you looked at and that you formed opinions Just about. said they're photoshopped. Do you, do you understand if they've been submitted as evidence in this case? Yes. Okay. And what conclusions have you formed about those? Same objection, Your Honor. That doesn't cure the issue of the objection. We have to go through this. Which photos is she talking about? Which one's in evidence? What exhibit numbers? That's, that's the basis of the we're objection. We're talking generally about opinions right now, Your Honor, and we're going to get into some specifics. I think we have to go straight to specifics. Okay. That's good. Yep, let's go to specifics. I like that. Let's see it. He's trying. Yep, he's trying. He's trying to compartmentalize it as if it's not all of them. Because, yeah, you're right, probably some of them are not Photoshopped. And they're like, well, we didn't Photoshop everything. You go, oh, well, so we only Photoshopped some of them. Um, ah. Mr. Neumeister, have you prepared a demonstrative um, that aids in your testimony with respect to any yeah. of the photos that you looked at in this case? Yes. Okay, here we go. Um, I'd like to pull up Plaintiff's 1303, Your Honor, if I might approach. All right. Your Honor, I would, again, object. We can approach to discuss okay, it. Approach. All right, let's see. Here we go. He's, he's brought up his binder with a bunch of Post-its on it. Let's go. Show us, please. Yeah, it, it's just <gasps> buckle up, chat. Yeah, I know. They're scared as hell. Well, the thing is, like, this guy, I mean, this is the Omega Wizard. I mean, he's gonna. he knows what it is. Like, I didn't even know you could check for that shit, to be honest with you. I had no idea. But he does. He gets it. And so that's what I'm really curious about, man. I am. No one will try to discredit this guy. I am really curious to see what they're going to ask him to try to, like, fucking make this guy seem like it's uh, it's not it. It's really committing a federal crime. Yeah, but, I mean, these are rich people, so that's, that's not, it doesn't really matter, right? I mean, this is different. I think probably the best part was the previous guy calling out Elaine for looking for her 15 minutes of fame. That was so good. Tom, can we pull Holy up um, shit. Defendant's Exhibit 170A, which has been admitted into evidence? Okay, here we go. Mr. Neumeister, um, is this, does this photo appear to be one that you have analyzed as part of your analysis in this case? Uh -huh. There were many versions of this photo. Um, I would say there were dozens of different versions with different chromatic values, different file sizes, different physical sizes. Some had been through Photos 1 or Photos 3, which are photo editing software uh, programs. Um, Your Honor, at this time I'd like to um, show Mr. De Mr. Neumeister's demonstrative um, plaintiff's exhibit 1303. All right. Any other objection? I would object again, Your Honor, because the photograph in 170A is not in evidence. Right. Or, yeah, I mean, the photograph is in evidence. The None of the photographs he wishes to show the jury are in evidence. 1303 is in evidence over objection. Oh, not in evidence, I'm sorry, as a demonstrative. Just as a demonstrative. I'm sorry. Could we go to publishing this brief, please? So. And Mr. Neumeister, um, what does this demonstrative show about um, the photos that you analyzed? Okay. Well, they, they appear to be similar. However, if you look below at the file sizes, uh, one on the left is 712 kilobytes. The one in the middle is 489 kilobytes. And the one on the right is 524 kilobytes. Now, what's unusual about that is these photos will not digitally fingerprint with each other. They won't hash. In other words, forensically, they don't match. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you could say, well, it was sent through email. Maybe it's a different size. This, the file sizes, for example, would be possibly, uh, you know, you can select the file size, you send a photo. Mm -hmm. But there's no way to authenticate any photo that was presented in the way the evidence was collected. And so what conclusions do you draw from that? Well, there's, this is just three of many of the same type of photos that are all different sizes and have different chromatic, which means color. Objection, Your Honor. We just had a ruling on this. All right. Sustained objection. Mr. Inuester, stick to your opinions that relate specifically to what you analyzed about the EXIF data, please. Jesus all three Christ. All photos had to go through some type of transformation to change sizes. 
We can take that one down. Um, you mentioned um, uh, photos 1.5 and photos 3.0 earlier, I believe. Photos. What uh, is that? Photos 3 and photos 1.5 are editing programs that um, Macintosh or Apple put out with their product. It's for uh, editing photos. In other words, you would put a photo in and you would change the colors or you would crop it or you would clarify it by you know, enhancing, for example, the sharpening uh -huh. or you could darken it. Um, but when you save a photo through an editing program, you leave a mark on the EXIF data. And what is the EXIF data? The EXIF data is the data that is embedded in a photograph that tells you a lot about the photograph. And again, in the early days when we were using film cameras, you would write down the f-stop, which is the, the light setting. You would you would write the type oh, of lens you use, the time of day, it's just... um, the type of film stock, the type of filters you're using. Now with digital cameras, oh, God. Uh, that's done electronically. And there's about, this guy's loving us? about I know. a thousand lines of code of which 50 are probably important that tell you what the camera was doing. Looks like she shit so the bed twice. So what's the significance of EXIF data in your photo analysis? Well, in this situation, I can see that normally Fuck. where the operating system of the camera would be, which means the version that the of operating system the phone is running on, it would normally say something like, I'll just throw out an arbitrary number, 9.1.3 operating system for iOS, which is Apple's iPhone operating system. Uh -huh. Instead of saying that, it says software photos 3.0 or photos 1.0. That means that the photo had to be rendered, which means composited together in an editing program. Did you prepare a demonstrative that shows uh, some of your analysis of some of the exit data of the photos in this case? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Can we pull up for oh, two literally in 4K. Your Honor, may I approach? Oh my God. Oh boy. Uh, this is just. Ah, uh, man. It was written. Yeah. No demonstrator one's laughing or, now. Any any objection? Any objection, Mr. I'm Murphy? Sorry, Your Honor. My she was just to publish so it sorry. as a demonstrative. Um. Uh, no objection as a demonstrative. All right. Thank you. We'll publish it as 1304, just as a demonstrative. Curtis, thanks for five subs. And Mr. Neumeister, are, are these the images in this demonstrative excerpts from the report you prepared oh, in this case? Oh no, this is yes, the one we yeah. saw. And what do they show? On this particular uh, Here we photo, go. And, and on all of them, it shows the first few lines of EXIF data, the ones that would be most important for yep. this photograph. So, for example, things you would see, the very top line would be the make of uh, phone. It's an Apple uh -huh. iPhone 6. And then the resolution is 72 pixels per inch, 72 to 1. Um, and instead, where it says software on a normal iPhone photo, it would, instead of saying Photos 3, it would say uh, the software version, for example, 9.3.1. And then you've got the date and the time of the photo uh, below that, and which is really easy to change in an EXIF editor. And below that, you have uh, things like the exact, uh, like the flash, you've got um, the exposure type, how long the exposure was. Oh my God. Uh, so, what you just highlighted there again was the date and time. Uh, so, that's uh, universal time code minus whatever area you're in uh, in the world. Anything else you want to show us with this demonstrative? Uh, yeah, just below that, if you look, uh, there's some. Um, <laughs> things that would say, for uh, example, a directly photographed image. That is not going to be necessarily say. accurate once it's been through an editor. Uh, it will always pretty much say that. Um, so when you're looking at scene, scene type or auto exposure, uh -huh. um, these are things that, uh, that really don't matter all that much. What would matter is, um, for example, if, if you're taking notes, the focal length would be important. Um, Smirk's the gone. pattern yeah. of metering. Things like that to a photographer would be would be important. 
And again, this is just a few lines, and the reason I put these in there was just to explain a bit what mm -hmm. EXIF data is. Uh, the actual thing I'm trying to point out is the fact that instead of an operating system, it shows the, um, uh, the editing program that was used on this photo. Um, are there additional photos that you did this analysis for? Yes, many. Okay. Um, can we scroll to the next page, please, Tom? All right, there's many of them. Let's go. Let's is there see anything um, about this photo that you noted as part of your analysis, Mr. Neumeister? Yes, again, it's, it's uh, you know, right, right there you've got photos 3.0 on that particular photo. Uh huh. And I think, you know, we pretty much covered what the, what the stuff is, but again, you see the photos 3.0. Wow. And again, this could not come out of an iPhone this way. This would go into a computer, be edited, and rendered through the photo uh, editing, photo editor, and this, this would then be embedded in the um, EXIF data. Okay. Do you have other photos in this demonstrative? Yes. All right, can we scroll to the next page? Yes, he does. Uh, All right, let's thing. see it another one. You've got up here in the top, you've got the, uh, the photos, 3.0. Of course and this he does. Is, uh, throughout a lot of the photos that are uh, in evidence or versions of the photos in evidence were gone through photos 3.0 or photos 1.5, an uh -huh. earlier version. Can we scroll to the next um, page, please, Tom? Holy shit, man. And what about this one? Same thing, photos 3.0. And Same again, thing. in a photo uh, editing app, you can do an awful lot of things. So when yep. you see photos 3.0, first of all, you know it's not anywhere near an original, uh -huh. there's going to be compression artifacts because it's a JPEG file. Yeah. Right. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Can we move on um, to the next page of this um, demonstrative, please? Yeah, absolutely. Why and not? Again, same thing. Uh, you've got the those app. Uh-huh. Okay. And I believe there's one final photo in this um, demonstrative. Jesus, what about man. This one? Again, if you look up there, it says uh, photos. 3.0 on that Instagram particular photo. model's adversary. All right. We can take that one down. Uh -huh. um, Your Honor, I have a little bit left. I don't know if you wanted to. All right. You want to take our afternoon? Let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess. Just uh, do not discuss the case, the case and don't do any else. Research. Oh, my God. <laughs> Lost to a JPEG? Yeah, I know. Why don't they compare two of the same picture? Well, probably because he's not done doing it, man. Can you okay, here we go. No, this. The volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I could plug your subs. Thank you. So, Mr. Newmeister, what was uh, depicted in that video? The same photo treated uh, two different ways. One was marked with the original. Op or with the operating system from an iPhone, uh -huh. which is iOS 9.3.1 on that particular uh, photo, the one this is 9.3.1, there is a graphic below indicating it. The second photo uh, is marked Photos 3, ah. and it looks quite a bit different. And, um, wow, look at just, that. Tom, could we pull up Defendant 708? That's crazy, isn't it? Not really, just a little bit. Mr. Neumeister, does the image in Defendant 708 appear to be uh, similar, same photo as uh, what was depicted in your demonstrative? It's the, it's the actually, it's the Photos 3.0 uh, edit version. Thank you. We can take that one down, Tom. Um, Mr. Neumeister, have you also formed an opinion about Defendant's Exhibits 712 and 713? Okay. Correct. Um, Even more of did them. Did you prepare a demonstrative that shows? Um, Here we go. How are they outside of the scope? Like no, what do you mean they're outside of the scope? They're photos that were submitted. How the fuck can that possibly be outside of the scope? Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, these guys are not happy. Like, it's, it's awful. She can show it? Yeah, I, I bet she'll probably be able to show it. Uh, he's trying to stop everything? I mean, wouldn't you? Like, that's what I'd try to do, too, if I were him. Holy shit, I'd be so fucking upset about that. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Holy shit. Uh, they're fuming. They've been called out. It's just, it, it's not looking good for them. I'm going to say that, especially whenever he's just proving it. And, like, this guy's not getting mad or upset. He's just saying how it is. Okay, here we go. Let's see it. 
Let's go. All right, could we pull up um, Plaintiff's Exhibit 1306, Tom? All right. And Your Honor, this is another video that, um, oh, can you pause that please? This is another video that we prepared. It's, it's not published yet, so I'm happy to play it once through. Um, so that play it once through. This is 1306. Okay, let's see it. I'm ready. Let me add him. Objection, our client's pants are on fire. Yeah. What uh, exhibits are these that are in this video? It doesn't say. I don't okay. know. Yeah, I, I tried to get my question out a moment ago. Defendant 712 and 713, Your Honor. 12 and 713. All right. Okay, 1306. Then Here we go. And was lawyer putting on a phone? Can they do that? I, I'm sure they can. And if we could go ahead and play that, please. Um, Tom? Oh, no. And Mr. Neumeister, um, what's your, um, what, what do we see here in this demonstrative? Um, there's, uh, ah. is it a 712, I believe you have, I'm not sure the Bates number, 712 and That's 713. The uh, they're two separate exhibits, except it's the exact same Shit. photograph that's been, uh, one's been edited, one hasn't, or I can't say that one hasn't, but uh, the colors have been uh, modified in an editor. Yep. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, beyond the scope of your ruling, talking about colors, it keeps happening. Yeah. Thank you, um, Mr. Newmeister. Um, did you form an opinion in this case about the authenticity of the photos that you review, reviewed of Ms. Heard? Well, first of all, you can't. I can't. Nobody can identify the authenticity of the photos of any of the photos marked photos three, photos one, or just marked with the operating system number and the reason is the manner of collection so these came from an itunes backup now what is an itunes backup it's Objection, not your honor i'm, I'm sorry you're on the scope of your ruling exif metadata this keeps happening your honor may I approach on this one man dude they just he's the an expert on colors yeah i know well they're worried because he's he's about to just keep going yeah, he's about to just keep going. Metadata, shut the fuck up. I know. Random bullshit. No, they're trying as hard as they can. They're running out the time. They're doing everything to prevent this guy from talking. And you know what? That's probably a good idea. They should do that as much as possible. Yeah, just keep it, yeah keeping him CC'd on DR, exactly. They're afraid of the context. Yeah, because the context is going to make them look even bad. Or, sorry, even, even worse. Uh, the transition where the two photos came together was incredible. Yeah, I, I love how they did that because that's what everybody was doing the other day. It's like all these photos, the side-by-sides, and he just fucking puts them right on top of each other. And it's like, boom, there it is. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. Here we go. So, Mr. Neumeister, um, without going into the specifics, what's your opinion about the authenticity of the photos you received from Ms. Hart? Based on the way they were collected, there would Objection, be Objection, no Your Honor. We just ruled on this. I framed my question, I thought, Your Honor, to avoid the issue that you're concerned about. Mr. Neumeister, what's your opinion about the authenticity here? There's no way for any forensic expert to validate any of these photos. Okay. Thank you very much. No further questions. Okay. They're not going to try to cross-examine this guy, are they? Good afternoon, Mr. Neumeister. Oh, my Good God. Afternoon. Um, oh, your no. only degree is in political science, correct? 42 years ago, correct. And you have no degree whatsoever from any academic institution in computer science, correct? That's correct. And you have no certifications in computer forensics, correct? That's correct. <laughs> nice try. That was a good one. From the opinions yeah. you testified today, it's you relied one. on no data except for the embedded EXIF metadata to support those opinions, correct? Incorrect. 
what other data did you rely on for the opinions you've testified to today? I was trying to explain that no, you kept objecting. What other data did you rely on for the actual opinions you've been able to testify to today besides EXIF metadata? The type of extraction that was performed? You're asking the question for the actual effect? opinions you del you testify to. That is what I would use. I would also use vector scopes. Objection, Your Honor. That's th that was not responsive to my question, Your Honor. If you want to approach, man, I hate to say this, but I think they should get Rotten Boy back up there or somebody else. This guy's an idiot. Yeah, this this guy is just I mean, this is really bad. I mean, why do they have him up there? Like he's getting rocked. Yeah. The thing is, like he's just acting like a bitch. Sir, you can answer that question. Pardon? You can answer the question. Okay. Can you restate the question? Uh I I don't oh. recall the question, Your Honor. Right. We can move on. Your Honor, maybe we could have the court reporter read it back. They could redirect. No. What was the question, Judy? I believe the question was, what methodology did I use to make my findings? Judy's voice has changed. That's... <laughs> Sorry. Is, is that correct, Judy? Oh, God. Okay. Man. Um... He doesn't want to answer now? I bet he remembers the question. I bet he says he doesn't remember it, so he can avoid having this guy answer it in full. That's fine. Okay. So, when you're analyzing Here we video go. or photo, in this case, it's his own Honor, question. Beyond the scope. All right, if you could just answer the question, sir. When you're analyzing a photo, a digital photo, you look at the EXIF data, you use a vector scope, you can use a Pantone chart if that's available, and that should be done, but that's a whole different deal. If I go into that, you'll object to it. So you'd also use a waveform scope. Uh -huh. You would use an RGB parade. You can use a histogram, though in this case, it's not really all that relevant. You are not offering any opinions that any photovac photograph in this case was intentionally modified by Ms. Hurd, correct? I'm just stating the fact that photographs were modified. But So you are not offering any opinion that any photograph in this case was intentionally modified by Ms. Hurd, correct? How could he possibly do that? That's correct. How can he know what the intent is? Can you please pull up Exhibit 170A? Can, are you in her brain? Defendant's no. 170, yes, okay. Your Honor. Yeah, it was actually. So you offer testimony regarding this photograph during the direct examination, right, Mr. Newmeister? There's. That, that's a yes or no, sir. Of a photograph like that, I, I don't exactly remember the uh, photograph. There's so many different versions of this photograph, but yes, I, I've talked about that. So many different photograph. versions. But on, uh, do you recall being deposed in this matter? Yes. And you were under oath? Yes. And that was on April 6, 2022? I believe. May I approach your Honor? Yes, sir. Uh-oh. Thank you. Uh-oh. So unprofessional. All right, what was the question? I forgot. I, I don't know. Yeah, this one's a real one. I know, he's pissed. So, um, Mr. Neumeister, if you could please turn to page 76. And when I say pages, those are the little pages in the four boxes, not oh, the page gotcha. at the top. And do you see page 76, line 3? You were asked on April 6, anywhere in your April 1st, 2022 expert disclosure, do you offer any opinions regarding the authenticity or lack of authenticity of the specific photograph produced as ALH 7101? Response, can I refer to my report to see if that specific number is in the report? Yes. Response, not that specific photo. I just grabbed three out of the batch. Do you see that? Yes. Can you please pull up exhibit 517? Or defendants 517. Thank you. Okay. Well, that proves him wrong. 
You are not offering any opinions regarding this specific photograph, right, Mr. Neumeister? That's correct. My testimony has been limited here. And you are not offering any opinion that any photograph was visually doctored by Amber, correct? Not by, I can't put the person uh, who might have done it. Well, you're not offering an opinion that a photo was visually doctored by anybody, are you? I'd have to see each photo. There's no way to authenticate any of these photos based on what I received. So you testified about photos three. Do you recall that testimony? Correct. Yeah, photos three is a photo editing and photo sorting application, correct? It's a photo editor and photo sorter as, as are a number of editors. So when you reference photos 3.0, you never did any independent research. Um, strike that, Your Honor. So when the when the software of a photograph, I feel bad for the guy. Says, this is awful for him. That could be just saying that the photo was saved in Photos 3.0, correct? Unless you looked at a scope of the photos, that would tell you that the parameters of the photo do not meet that of the cell phone that it was taken on. But the notation Photos 3.0 in the software EXIF metadata, that does not in and of itself mean that the photo was edited in Photos 3.0, correct? It means that you've recompressed the photo and it will not hash or digitally fingerprint with the original photo. But it does not mean in and of itself that it was visually edited in any way in Photos 3.0, correct? Again, it's not the same photo because you're using lossy compression once you save it, so it, you have changed the photo. He's technically right. This guy thought he would get him on a technicality. So if you could turn to page 233. Of this that is transcript. the technicality wizard here. That's not going to happen. And technicalities inside you of see technicalities. A when it says exit software, okay, photos 3.0, on to 234. That's just saying it was saved in photos 3.0, right? Response saved in 3.0. That's correct. Question, that notation in and of itself does not mean that the photo was edited in 3.0, right? Answer, that's correct. Did I read that correctly? Yes. A, change a file is not has edited. not changed visually just because it has been processed through photos 3.0, correct? Yes, it That's does. incorrect. That, yes, it does. Uh, can you look at page 128 of your deposition, please? <laughs> oh, God. He's really going to... He's really going to... He's actually trying to beat bottom, this wizard. Line There's question, no way. See, question, but the file changed visually just because it is it has been processed through Photos 3.0. Answer, you know, obviously I understand what you're asking. From a technical point, yes, because of the compression. You get down to scopes and artifacts, yes, it has changed. Was it intentionally changed? We don't know. We in don't other know. words, did somebody save it in there and just save the photo? We don't know. Did I read that correctly? That's correct. But again, it says so here. Just, that was my question, Mr. Newmeister. Okay. So if the EXIF metadata software field lists the software as iOS, you have no reason to dispute that, correct? Incorrect. Well, isn't data data? That's what you testified to, right? It's very simple to modify EXIF data. It's, I mean, Did you, you find any evidence phone? in this case of actual modification of EXIF metadata? You can't. You can't authenticate any of these photos because of the way they were. That wasn't my question, Mr. Newmeister. Did you find any evidence of any modification of EXIF metadata of any photograph in this case? You didn't listen to my answer. My answer is there is no way to know because of the way the files were presented. So it's not a yes or so no you question. Found, but you, actually, you found no actual evidence of it, correct? That no one could. I'm not asking way. if anyone else could, Mr. Newmeister. I'm asking, did you yourself... Find, you, you found no evidence of any modification of me EXIF metadata of any photograph in this case, correct? Now, I understand trying to control the narrative, but there's no way to answer that scientifically because given the evidence we were given, there is no way to positively or negatively the answer that. This guy's career. It's not a question that can be answered. It is, it is a question, Mr. Neumeister. The question is, did you He's yourself... He's done. You like, found that's it. He's no done. affirmative evidence of any modification of software EXIF metadata of any photograph in this case, correct? You you found no actual evidence of that, did you? No one could tell either way because... I'm not asking way. about anyone else, Mr. Neumeister. I'm asking about you. Did you... You found no evidence of that, did you? Objection, Your Honor. Asked and answered. He's, he's not answered what he found, Your Overruled. Honor. Overruled. 
there's not a way to answer that the way you're asking the question. You have to restate it. In, in a, you're trying to control Your Honor, he's not responding to the question. I mean, could you just answer yes or no, sir, to the question? It's not a yes or no answer. It's not a yes or no question. That's Did what I was saying. Yes or no, you found, you found no evidence of EXIF metadata modification of any photograph in this case, correct? That's incorrect. Okay. Because the absence of evidence is not no evidence. It That's is your true. opinion that the metadata of all photographs of purported injuries oh, that Ms. No. Heard has identified as her trial exhibits oh, do no. not indicate that the photographs went through a photo editing application, correct? Well, uh, first of all, that's not a yes or no question because a lot of the exhibits that you have uh, um, put up, they're not photographs. They're screen grabs and they've been changed from a uh, Apple format, which is JPEG, J JPEG, to a JPG Microsoft format. So you have actually changed the exemplars. You've changed the data yourselves. The, uh, we actually ran uh, EXIF data on some of your own examples that you've entered into evidence. They are not photos from an iPhone. Those were edited in on a PC. I'm going to uh, they actually hand thought, up a page from your disclosure. They actually thought, he actually thought that he could beat this guy. Like, it, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, he's just not like, yeah, to a chart. Yeah, it, it's like the guy, and, and it's like everything that he's saying is like technically accurate. Because the lawyer is trying to catch him on a technicality, but he knows more about it. So he knows technicalities inside of technicalities that he can technically say that will make his answer yes, sir. against the one that he's looking for. Thank you. The, the, Thank you. Yeah. He doesn't even know enough about it to even be able to catch him. So do you see on page eight of your disclosure, Mr. Neumeister, it states, quote, the, the metadata of all of the photographs of purported injuries that Ms. Hurd has identified as her trial exhibits do not indicate that the photographs went through a photo editing application. Did I read that correct? That's correct. No further, we're talking no further questions. Yeah, all right, redirect. Mr. Neumeister, um, yes. a moment ago, Mr. Murphy was asking you some questions about your opinion about the trial exhibits that Ms. Hurd has offered in this matter. Mm -hmm. um, and he asked you about your opinion that they don't indicate that they've gone through a photo editing application. What can you tell us about that? Well, first of all, in this last exhibit, it says metadata, not EXIF data. So that's two different things altogether. We're talking EXIF data, and on the report, I put metadata because I was requested to cover meta and exit data, so it's taken out of context. The exit data is the data based that's embedded in the photo. Metadata can be the file data about the file itself, two different things. So the way the data was collected, it was <laughs> an iTunes backup is a backup. Objection, Your Honor. Backups outside the scope of Your Honor's ruling Thank beyond you. exit metadata. I think you opened the door on the, the uh, overruled the objection. Ah. Thank you, Your Honor. Go ahead, Brian. Here we go. An iTunes backup is only a backup of things that are on an iPhone that have not been deleted. It does not have the critical operating system. It doesn't have any of the files that would validate the path of a photograph in that phone. It does not have a lot of the log files. It does not have Open the knowledge C correct. database, yep. which talks about usage of the phone and uh, the patterns of how data was handled. All it is is the photos you des decided to save, not the photos you deleted. So it's a very limited database. Without the system registry or without the system operating system, there's no way to tell because it's very easy to modify a, a photo on a phone and have it just read iOS 9.3.1. But with the actual phone, if you were able to uh -huh. get a hold of the actual phone, and in 95% of all cases we work, we have the actual phone, it doesn't matter if the the phones are 10 years old or 20 years old, or I mean, not 20 years old, but 10 years old, the reason is if people have something they want to keep as evidence, they don't throw out their phones. They don't right. recycle their phones. 
they save their phones. True. So people ask how we're doing phones on 13 year old cases because people do not throw out evidence. They keep the phone. So in a situation like this, there Where's are no forensic phone? extractions. In fact, the extractions we were provided were backups of backups of iTunes uh, just exports. So it's third generation and there is no way to verify the file paths and the history of any single photo that we've looked at. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, sir. You can have a seat in the courtroom or you're free to go. Thank you very much. All right. Your next witness. God. Morgan, excuse me, <laughs> Beverly Leonard by video link. I need the TV. That was excuse fucking me. brutal. The TV up. I, I just like the, the audacity of that guy to think that he could actually stop this wizard. There's no chance. No shot. All right. The lessons we've learned in COVID, correct? Okay. All right. Your first question. Thank you. Let's very do much. it. Good afternoon, Miss Leonard. Good afternoon. Would you please state your full name for the record? Beverly R. Leonard. Where are you testifying from? I'm testifying from my home in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the defendant in this matter, Amber Heard? Yes, I am. And how are you familiar with her? I met her in 2009 at SeaTac International Airport. Why were you at the airport? I worked there. What happened when you met Ms. Heard in 2009? I was uh, in the baggage claim area and I observed her with a traveling companion and uh, they were, got into an altercation where um, Ms. Heard was, um, had grabbed her traveling companion and um, the pulled fuck? something from her neck. At that point I got oh. up and went over to try to break up what appeared to be a fight. Uh, and I uh, summoned a colleague to help me, and I stepped in between them and separated them, um, stopping any further uh, injuries or uh -huh. escalation. How would you describe the interaction between Ms. Hurd and her traveling companion? Uh, Ms. Hurd was aggressive towards her traveling companion, and... Mm -hmm. She I'm had bad. reached up and grabbed her arm and uh, pulled a necklace off of her, and 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 then I uh, observed her having it in her hand. Um, she seemed to be um, not very steady on her feet. Uh, her eyes were blurry uh, and okay. watery, and I could smell alcohol. What was Miss Heard's traveling companion's reaction to being assaulted by Miss Heard? Objection, relevance, uh, and uh, us. The same objection on relevance yes okay what did miss heard's traveling companion do do we evidence this is an airport uh, maybe she not raised her hands in what appeared to be a defensive um manner and but other than that she was pretty stoic and uh, that was didn't her respond much her stature it was uh, two or three inches taller than miss heard so um she, she it didn't uh, she didn't really need to have to uh, defend herself. <laughs> okay. How would you describe Ms. Heard's oh, demeanor when me. you Sorry. stepped in between Ms. Heard and her traveling companion? I got, I got the, I got the abuse. Uh, she was mixed up. somewhat dismissive. She just said, um, "We're we're just having Excuse an me. argument. We're fine. We're fine." Uh, because I was asking if, if they were okay. Are you okay? Um, is there anything wrong? What, you know, what's going on? Um, and objection uh -huh. hearsay, just objection hearsay to what she's saying. All right, all right, I'll, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Yeah. What, if any, injuries did you observe on Miss Hurd's traveling companion? She had um, abrasion on the side of her neck where the mm -hmm. necklace was, um, like a rope burn um, from the uh, chain as it was removed. Yeah. How did you come to testify in this trial? I became aware of this situation, um, specifically this trial, 
um, because I was sent an email uh, anonymously. I don't even know who it came from. Okay. Um, asking objection uh, hearsay. Right. Uh, I'll sustain the objection. Understand. <laughs> Okay. How would you generally describe Ms. Hurd's behavior on the occasion you met her in 2009? Objection, Your Honor. I already asked and answered the specifics. No. What What is going on here? What are we doing? What is this? What is this shit? Yes, Your Honor. There we go. Okay. Sorry about Cross that. Cross-examination. Ms. Ms. Leonard, when did you... We good. Uh, contact counsel for Mr. Depp? Late last night. Late last night. Okay. And this happened in 2009, correct? Yes. 13 years ago, correct? Yes. And you know that this trial is being televised, right? Yes. And so you know that if you have something that might be significant, uh, to say that that way you can get on television, right? No, I had no desire to be on television. Um, I actually waited for a call and uh, wondered why I hadn't been contacted. All right, but you okay? Uh, but you only contact. You reached out and contacted them last night, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. I have no further questions. All right. Any redirect? Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Thanks, Ms. Leonard. You're free to sign off. Thank you. All right. All right. Your next witness. Your Honor, may we approach? Ah, sure. man. Like, she tried to pull that same bullshit on her. She tried to do that same motherfucking bullshit. What was that? It's like, what 15 minutes of fame did you even think that you were going for, man? Like, it's just like, what were you thinking that you were trying to do? Yeah. It's some weak shit. Yeah. Like, it's just cringe as fuck. It's like she didn't try to advertise anything. Like, it, it didn't look like she really got dressed up for the interview. Nothing. She just said, hey, this is what happened, and that was about it. I mean, there was no real context to it beyond that. It was just like, okay, all right, this is what it was. It's fucking stressful. Yeah, exactly. By the way, I saw some losers in chat make negative comments about her appearance. I would respond to them, but I can't anymore because they're banned. And that is what will continue to happen. That's it. It's, you're going to get banned. You, you type something weird like that, uh, you're going to get banned. Uh, I, I don't want to go through and, and, and fucking moralize over this, etc. But if you comment on somebody's appearance in a negative or what we consider to be a hostile way, we're just going to ban you. You're nothing. You're absolutely fucking nothing. And so don't forget that whenever you're typing your shit and making everybody's life worse is that we will throw you away like a piece of trash because that's what you are. Anyway, so listen, uh, I, I feel like a lot of these end witnesses are really, really uh, damning because these are people who are just completely, uh, they're not any sort of like real bias with them or anything like that. These are just random witnesses and random people uh, that have been brought in and that's literally all there is to it. So it's like they have this person who tells the story and then it's like, I think you could make the argument that like, yeah, sure. Maybe the first guy, maybe he wanted a little bit more of the press, right? Maybe he wanted to come on and be on camera. You know, it's obvious that he dressed up to look good. He's wearing a suit. He's, he's dressed well. Uh, you know, it, it's not like he's just doing this, uh, you know, like off the cuff the same way that the guy the other day did. It was in the, in the, the, the trailer area, right? So, yeah, he's, he's dressed up. He looks good. He's talking about what he's doing. He expresses his name, etc. But this other woman, she's just literally some woman that got on. She's using a fucking webcam, a, a built-in webcam for a laptop, probably. It's like, it, 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 they're going to ask her if she's doing this for her 15 minutes of fame? What the fuck? 
Like, wh what the fuck are you talking about? 15 minutes of fame. It was on her phone. Yeah, even on her phone. Even more so, right? Yeah, it's just disrespectful. It's like, I can see that people try and do this. A producer of Twitch Rivals. Yeah, but all I'm saying is like, that other person, the woman, made literally no effort to try to do anything special. She was not really talking about it. She was like, yeah, this happened a while ago. And then that's literally it. I mean, think about all the different ways somebody could have advertised something. They could have a product in the background uh, that they could do something like that. There's a million other ways, and none of that stuff happened. Exactly. They just want to discredit her without wasting their limited time. Yeah, exactly. They basically, uh, you know what it's like? It's like whenever you see people that go and they'll take like a, um, it's like in an FPS game, whenever somebody's like a million miles away and they just take a sniper shot and it's like, what if I hit him? Ladies and gentlemen, we're still on track to have yeah. um, closing arguments on Friday morning. Um, Isn't that but, something? Uh, the, the plaintiff only has one more uh, witness in rebuttal. And then since we have a counterclaim, the defense has a chance to have rebuttal for their counterclaim. And so, so you'll hear the, the remaining witnesses tomorrow on that. Um, okay. So since we don't have anything further today, I'm going to go ahead and release you at this point. Do not discuss the case with anybody. Don't do any okay. outside research. And we'll see you back tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, okay? Okay. Let's Thank see you. what they're going to do now. Because they're probably going to go a little bit farther with the lawyers and shit. Uh, but let's see what this is. What's a counterclaim? Yeah, let me see what happens. We go home early? Yeah, sure. Well, let me see why exactly this is. And as you testify that you saw Amber somewhere in Texas, you took a bottle and violated a homeless person with it? No, I've never seen Amber Heard. Uh, yeah, I, I never have. Okay. I, I wouldn't even have recognized her, to be honest. All right, and then for the record, okay. charge the plaintiff the remaining time to 5.30. The plaintiff uh, has seven hours and eight minutes left as of this moment. Okay, seven hours And versus... the defendant has one hour and 16 minutes left, right? So we're on the same page. Okay, and jury instructions, um, we get clean copies today. Seven uh, hours. Yes, so here's, I think we just received- Seven hours versus today. one We've hour? someone not in the court who's okay. been looking at those and I think has narrowed down the areas of disagreement. One and hour is left. sending or has sent to Sammy uh, an email that sets forth the few remaining issues. Of they can't talk soon. That's right. Okay. It will get to that mostly point. Mostly there, but I haven't had a chance Seems to. Got what they Twitter. Okay, That's so crazy. I, so I have everything. So maybe I don't maybe have you're right. Quite yet. Then it's not fine. Yeah, maybe okay, you're but fucking right. Sometime this evening. Best Johnny Depp movie so far. It's just holy shit.